Hello. So I just got back from my second trip to uh, pick up parcel place because uh, I can a post. Um, anyways, long story short, I got a package from Jackson's and this time I was hit with duty. Yay. And that means they won't leave it. Uh, the website said that it was um, a card was left on Thursday. It wasn't. Friday I went to pick it up and it wasn't there yet. So hence today is Saturday and I'm picking it up and I paid for the duty, which is fine. Um, you know, I have to say it's only been a couple of times that I've got hit with duty for Jackson's. So it's not so bad. Uh, I was just getting into it without sharing all my all my details. It's a little bit eaten up. So why do I keep ordering things from Jackson's? Well, I don't do it that much anymore. Um, the independent stores in Toronto have got so good uh, that there's really no need. They have a lot of the European brands that um, for a while there are only European stores had, but now it's a lot better. But the one thing that they have that the stores don't have here, at least some of them don't, are um, open stock. So I've got a couple, that's it. I've got a couple of open stock things, um, pencils, hopefully, yeah. And while I was at it, uh, I can't get this brand here. It's Sea White of Brighton uh, Travel Sketchbook, as you see here. Um, I'm not a fan of the texture of the um, Sea White, but it's a lot cheaper than the ones the Hanamila one that I got to take to Mexico. And I know I have a trip coming up uh, with the Urban Sketchers in Chicago. It's not for a while now, but I thought this was on sale, so I thought I would go ahead. And I also got this brush, a rigger brush or a liner brush to put in my travel kit. That's filling and we'll go into this more in depth I'm just double checking that I have everything here okay so this is the random gray special edition from Schminka it's watercolor it is I believe yep yeah, five milliliter and every year, I think they put together a random gray that they sell. And I always love grays. So that I'd add that. And then Schminka also came out with these um, Horidom Naturals. Um, I got the Chalk White. I think that's what it is. And that is PW18. So I'm going to look at that a little bit more closely. And then I start doing, um, I did a little workshop just down the street from me for lino cut. And I haven't done lino cut since high school. So, or maybe I, you know, I might have done it at the open studio in Toronto, which you should look into if you're in Toronto. Uh, they're going through a bit of a financial crisis right now, like a lot of arts organizations and... So take a look, um, there's prints that you can buy to help support them. It's a fabulous, fabulous place. You're going to close in June to restructure and then reopen, hopefully in September, but we'll see. Anyways, I got some lino cut. These are the safety cutters. So you'll see there's a whole load of them in there because I have the speed ball. I hope they fit into. I think they do. 
And then this was recommended on a Domestica uh, Lino Cut stamp course that I did. And this is a file, P F E I L, double L, just one L. Um, and it's a really, really, really small point on that. So it's a lot easier to do lettering and things like that that take a really small um, amount that you have to carve out. So that was the only place that I could get that. I think there is, I think you can get some of them online here. Um, especially through the States. The States are usually more expensive for shipping. And then I got the open stock pencils that I was low on. I got a couple of my favorites, which is the Payne's Gray 60% 507. Uh, the Payne's Gray 508 Full Strength. The Payne's Gray 30% 504. And then I got Ivory Black Derwent Drawing Pencil, which I love. I love all the Derwent Drawing Pencils. And you can always get those open stock. <clears throat> well, I think Above Ground has them open stock, but they only have uh, limited colors. So they have white, black, chocolate, and I think a terracotta color or red sepia, I'm not sure. More that you would use for, as it says, drawing. So they don't have the whole range as open stock. Um, and maybe Madoko in Toronto also has them. But every time I go into above ground, they don't have the black. And I was getting kind of low on that. So that's it. I will go into more depth, but first I must pause because I have a course starting. See you in a bit. So we're back again. Uh, it's been a couple of days since I opened the box, so I will confess, um, because I really wanted to get to use some of these things and I just didn't have the ability to do a video about it. Um, so. What I did do was I put these two Schmincke tubes into my little travel and they're just not quite dry out yet. Um, that's the little retro uh, palette that I got, um, I think just after Christmas or something. Anyways, it's, it's super cute and you can fit two more in here. So. But I did swatch these out on my own. And let's talk about the Horridum Naturals. Uh, I'm gonna read out what the website says. There are 16 colors in the range. They're exclusively natural earth pigments and plant resin slash extracts, 100% vegan, uh, gum Arabic based, matte and mostly semi-transparent can be mixed and combined with watercolors and gouache. Good light fastness. Uh, 15 of the colors have three to five star light fastness. Suitable for all paper and cardboard types. Can be used pure or diluted with water. Water soluble and reusable after drying. Subtle odor and available in 15 milliliter tubes, such as this and two theme sets. So, unfortunately, as you'll see, this color is more transparent than I would like, but we'll go there in a few minutes. So the random gray is basically what I said um, earlier on. It's um, formulated every year. They have, so this changes every year. And it's based, it's, they use surplus pigments to um, put all together and then so you get a random gr gray. Just as you would if you put, if you mix up all the colors on your palette, it would produce a gray. Um, 
Most people don't want to do that because it's a muddy color. Um, but then formulating this with different colors, um, you get different things happening. So you get not just different color, but uh, you'll see some granulation too. And it's a little bit unpredictable and kind of fun to deal with. So let's get to that first. I've got, uh, this is just Fabriano watercolor paper. It's not cotton, but it is cold pressed. So we'll do that. And just gonna grab maybe a little bit bigger of a brush. Maybe a flat brush. Let's start with the random gray. So this random gray has a little bit of a warm tone to it, I would say. Just gonna layer up a bit more and really drag it out. And you can really see the granulation starting there. And all the, you can see all the different colors happening. So you can see blues, um, warm colors. I mean, don't know, almost like an orange color, orange tone to it. So that I like. Uh, and it'll be good to have in this little travel, um, little travel kit. This one is the Rugen Chalk. And I'm going to apply that really thickly. I'm going to apply it even thicker straight from the tube. And it really wants to come out of the tube. That's kind of why I put them in half pans right away is because it just came overflowing. Now that's quite thick. And I know they say it's kind of a almost like a watercolor gouache hybrid, this natural line. But you would have to apply it straight from the tube in order to get any color. Uh, the only thing that you could do is mix it with other colors. So I'm gonna try doing that. I have some green here on the palette already. I'm just gonna mix that. that up a bit. Now adding a white, now this isn't a white, it's a natural pigment. Um, will make it a little bit more opaque, but it's still, and that's a lot of water. Let's try it with not much water.
can still, it's so transparent. It's almost like a glaze. Oh, and here comes Finn. So I have a black paper that I'm gonna test it out on. And when you put it on thick, it just, it doesn't flow properly. You really need water to get it going. It just, it feels sticky. So I don't know if I got maybe a bad batch or this is just what it's supposed to be like. If anyone else has bought this, let me know in the comments. So I'll let that dry and we'll, we'll go on. And my kitten's trying to play with my brush in the water. So we'll come back to that when both are dried. I just got back into line of cutting, as I said, and the domestic course uh, suggested this tool. It's the 0.5 uh, file. Let's maybe show how Ben. Ben. Ben's trying to eat the holder for my phone. Excuse me. So it's a very, very small, you barely have to put pressure on it. Just kind of lightly go across and let's how small the gro grooves are. So it's really, it was recommended for if you're doing um, lettering. So that way you can get really finely around the letters. And then this is just a bunch of different colors. It's supposed to be a safety one so that you don't gouge yourself. And they just pop in to this speed ball. These are SD, but they fit inside these. I always get the ball bearing in wrong. Still in wrong because when you're doing something on camera it's always more of a problem <laughs> now it's trapped because so I know that it's in wrong anyways if you do line of cutting you know how to do that properly so those are the two line of cut things not shown on camera, something else that I got um, recently is a laser printer because um, you can transfer your designs onto um, the soft lino board. <laughs> that was been knocking off that um, pad of black paper off my desk. Uh, so you can transfer the laser um, printed design onto these soft things. It's also, this is a speedball one, soft carve lino. And what I've done, um, if you go on YouTube, a lot of people say, you know, use the, um, if you have labels at home, like Avery labels, 
And once you peel off all of the actual stickers, you can use that paper um, to print on because it'll release from there with an iron. I didn't have any spare like that and I wasn't going to take a bunch of labels off just to have that. I do have glassine and I'll do that in another video um, showing how to uh, transfer with the glassine and it worked. So, and I made my first little stamp yesterday. So, moving on to this brush. Now, I did buy a rigger to go into my uh, case. But it's a little long, so I was thinking maybe I would put this one in so it wouldn't get bashed up quite so much. And if anybody has cats, you know, you immediately put these bands or elastic bands somewhere where they won't get up because Finn is just addicted to them. So let's turn that over. And let's get some so I'm just kind of rolling it in the paint and it provides a really nice line I didn't have enough water on that. You can go pretty thin. Just the tip. So that's going to go into my pen case for traveling. And then pencils. Just wanted to get um, some nice smoother paper to show you. So let's start with the lightest. This is the Payne's Gray 30%. I'm just using the side. This is applying a little bit more pressure. The luminance are just such beautiful pencils. And let's go for the 60%. And just using this side. Varying the pressure. And then finally, this is full strength paint spray. Can be very dark. It can be a replacement for black if you don't like using black. So that's that. But if you do like using black, this one's really good. And this is the Derwent Drawing Ivory Black. And as you can see, that is just covers so well, it's so opaque and so black. It's almost like using charcoal or something. So those are all the pencils. And then the final thing was the sketchbook. And it's the same, yep, same size as the one that I took to LA. I have a sketchbook tour of this up, but the one thing that I didn't like, and I don't know if you, it picks it up on camera, is there's almost a vertical, um, oh, I forgot the word for it. Anyways, it's a vertical texture to it that I didn't really enjoy using. 
I preferred the one that I just took to Mexico, which is um, Hanamula, and they're 100% cotton. But it's a good price, and I thought I would take it uh, with me to Chicago when I go for the Urban Sketching Symposium there. And that's it. So let's go back to these swatches. This is the white now dry, or I have to stop calling it white, the chalk color dried. And this is it on white and mixed. And it's, it's not, it's not as strong as like say a buff titanium. It's so, so transparent. Um, it's, I'm not sure how I'll use it. Probably just as a mix with other colors. And then this is the random gray, which is kind of nice. And also to test that chalk color, I've also put it on this Canson paper. And again, you can barely see it. I'm sorry for the light changing. It was so sunny <laughs> and now it's clouded over. Uh, so that was that. Um, so two bad things. I had to pay duty, which is fine. Um, and then this, I'm not sure about. So let me know if uh, you've used this, if it looks any different. Um, your tube looks any different to mine. Um, I just think this is what it's supposed to look like. And I'm wishing I got a different color to try instead of this one. But you live and learn. And that's that. So if you like what you see, um, I will put uh, my website down in the description because there's a lot more on my website for artists to look at. There are art book reviews, um, color charts to download as PDFs um, of things that I've swatched and uh, what tools I use for urban sketching, sketchbook tours, yada, yada. Oh, and importantly, uh, my own watercolor that I make is also available for purchase on my website. So hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Bye.